I stayed at Hotel Nadia during my time in Amsterdam. I traveled solo, so all of the places I attended, I planned just for myself. But some spots are better to share with a friend. Oh my goodness, look at these stairs. I would not advise anyone with lots of luggage or traveling with small children to stay here. The room was decent for the most part, and the staff was very kind, but I couldn't get over how they won't let guests close their own windows. You have to request to have reception, which I think is pretty inconvenient. But I wasn't there to just sit in my room. I came to learn and explore. On my second day, I went on Captain Dave's canal cruise, which was a relaxing start to a day full of adventure. Next, I went to the Heineken experience, which was a bit out of my comfort zone. I'm not much of a drinker, but I went anyway because of its popularity. Fortunately, it had its moments. I learned a lot about the hard work put into making Heineken into the beer it is today. And to celebrate, the tour offered games and free drinks in a bar to socialize with your friends, or in my case, strangers. After returning to my hotel and getting some rest, I took the stairs of death again to take a tour talking about what most people know Amsterdam for. In this area, I met with a group to learn about the history of the red light district. We started right by this bull that I'm positive is a nod to the bull in New York City. The following contains non-family friendly subjects, so viewers discretion is advised. Amsterdam has a lot of attractions for children, but the red light district is not one of them. It's an area of the city that has all types of strip clubs, sex shops and performances. This is the place that is not for the faint-hearted, where you can openly indulge in fantasies you would normally keep hidden. It's often visited to see the women in the windows, people whose jobs is to lure customers in with their bodies, and what happens after that is easy to guess. I stopped by the Red Light Secrets Museum before the tour to learn more about their occupation. I'd recommend it, but just to be clear, this is also not for children. Even if they have an adult with them, under no circumstances can they enter any of the following places I'm going to list off. The Red Light Shop, Casino City, and Banana Bar, which is popular for allowing guests to eat bananas out of... Let's move on. There's also peep shows like Sex Palace and a Sexy Lou, which is an acquired taste. Long story short, avoid this part if you want a PG vacation. My favorite attraction at the district was this 5D ride, and I was lucky enough to enjoy it all by myself. It was super empty, and while I know why it would be, among all the other things, I'm giving it a special shout out because it was so funny to try out. Day three strayed away from the intimate wonders of the district and went more to the artistic side by visiting the Van Gogh Museum. This place is for you if Van Gogh is a favorite artist, 
or if you appreciate art in general. Unlike the district, this is family friendly, but can get crowded and loud really fast, so plan accordingly. I thought I knew enough about the Dutch artist, but after my visit, I definitely did not. He was beyond some of the infamy that he's known for, and like all of us, he was just a human trying to get by. I had to get at least one souvenir, and I bought myself this magnet of my favorite painting I saw that day, Almond Blossom. If you knew the history behind said painting, I bet you'd buy this too. If you ever come to Amsterdam, I beg you to try Belza. It's a mystical dining experience that offers a seven course meal that changes every few months. It promises to send you straight to heaven, and that it did. It can be easy to miss along the district, but when you find it, you'll never want to leave. The menu I was served was called Around the World, giving me small dishes from the Netherlands, Japan, Africa, and more. Here's a small reel to give you a taste of this wonderful restaurant. So like food, the food flow in the afternoon is just the smell of the afternoon and the crunchy texture. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> As you could see from me showcasing this piece of chocolate, I was thankful to have found this place and wanted everyone to try it out. It's unlikely you'll get the same food as I did, but I promise that whatever you have, it'll be out of this world. But eventually all good things have to come to an end, and it was my last full day in Amsterdam, so I had to leave Belza and go back to my hotel. But not before going out with a bang. Impulsively, I bought a ticket to the famous Casa Rosso, where I watched performances that has forever changed me as a person. It's like a rated R variety show, and you applaud the performers for doing what humans tend to love doing most. And after that, it was time to pack up and say goodbye. Was it worth it coming to Amsterdam? I say absolutely. If I'm ever lucky enough to return someday, I'd love to invite a friend. There were several things I believe could have been more fun with one, but I don't regret coming alone. Sometimes you have to go solo in order to make the most out of your life but always be safe, especially in a place that profits off the district. But like I said earlier, there are also things for children to do too. So don't exclude Amsterdam from a family trip. There are lots of canal cruises, museums, parks, etc. to have everyone in the family leave with a smile on their face. If anybody shouldn't visit, is those that are culturally insensitive, as there are certain things the Dutch do differently than Americans, and Amsterdam is also known for being very LGBT friendly and they make that very clear everywhere. Otherwise, I can see anybody finding their place in this town. I'll leave my itinerary at the end of this video so you can see every single thing I did, in case you want to try it too. I hope this has been entertaining and informative. Remember, every trip is what you make of it.